Welcome to the Budget Mom YouTube channel. I'm Kamiko Love from thebudgetmom.com and today we are doing a real life budget with a lot of firsts. So this is the first time we have ever shared a real life budget in euros. Today we are talking about a community member named GoFran. She currently lives in Belgium. She lives at home. She paid for her car in cash in 2020. This is also a very different real life budget in the fact that this is the first time I've ever had to walk through the process and show the process of how to even prepare or create a budget when you know you are going to be moving. Currently, GoFran lives at home with her mom. She doesn't have a lot of expenses. Her mom pays for a lot of the expenses, even though she's offered to help more financially, her mom won't let her and is telling her, hey, instead of paying me, I want you to save that money for when you move out. So GoFran's problem isn't necessarily a problem with budgeting. She's doing very well with her budget. Her main question is struggling with how or with understanding how to navigate moving out on her own and how to prepare herself financially for what those possible new expenses could be in her life. So let's look at GoFran's information. So before we get into the budget by paycheck method, let's look a little bit more at GoFran's information. So her why, her purpose for wanting to do better with her finances. So the reason I decided to get my finances in order is because I don't want money or bills to control my life. I want to feel secure and make sure I don't panic whenever an unexpected cost turns up. Above all that, I want to create a healthy money mindset now so my kids later will have a good example growing up since I grew up with a single mom who had to sometimes struggle to make ends meet. A little bit more of her personal story. She's 24. She lives in Belgium and works full time at a startup as a digital marketer since January of 2022. She still lives with her mom. I came across TBM in 2019 and I decided to flip my entire personal financial system. I was never taught how to handle money or save. And that summer I was being confronted by the fact through seeing other friends go on trips or do fun stuff, all the things I couldn't do, even though I worked as a student during the weekends and holidays. Things had to change and I was done blaming anyone else. I felt like if I don't want my future kids to end up in the same situation, I need to make some drastic adjustments. As a fresh employee, I hope the discipline and money mindset that I've worked on over the past few years will help me navigate this bigger budget, but I still sometimes feel some anxiety and uncertainty. Now on top of this story, when we were exchanging email communications, you know, she explained, you know, she's single. She lives at home with her mom in Belgium. She's moving out this November. She doesn't have a lot of debt. She paid for her car in cash in 2020. She tries to help her mom more financially, but her mom won't allow her to. She really, her mom really wants her to save for when she's planning on moving out. Here's what caught me about her story in the email communication I had with GoFran. She said she's struggling with understanding how to navigate moving out on her own and how to handle and prepare her budget for the new expenses she will have in her life when she does move out. So let's take a look at her income. She is paid weekly and monthly. Her, her regular paycheck from her full-time job is monthly on the first. For, now, this is in euros. Okay, we're talking about this in euros. So for 1707, she gets 45 euros a week for tutoring. So she gets about uh, 1887 euros every single month. If we look at her fixed expenses, they're small. Remember, she is young, she's living at home, she's about to move out on her own. So she does do 50 euros for her mom, 40 for the gym, nine for Netflix, 25 for a credit card, which we're gonna be talking about, 20 for phone, and 154 in investment contribution. So her total fixed bills and expenses is 294 euros. If we look at her variable expenses, so she's got beauty, eating out. She does separate eating out for lunch or work, shopping, and then um, don't pay any attention to my 
chicken scratches here, but gas. So her variable spending equals 370 euros. So if we look at her bills and fixed expenses and then her variable spending, we are, you know, about six, 650 or so in euros. But if we look at her income, we're at 1887. So she, it's not a matter of her having a spending or income problem. But before we move on, let's take a look at her debt. She has one credit card, has a balance of 345 euros at 12%. The minimum payment is 25 euros on the 10th. So now let's look at her savings. So she has her big priority, her number one priority is that moving expense. She wants 2,000 euros by November of 2022. But she also has some sinking funds down here. Two are absolute necessities and needs. That's her car insurance and her car taxes. She also has a want, which is a vacation. Now she already has 2,000 euros. She has some things already saved for these goals, um, which is right here, already saved. This is what she wants to hit. These are the total amount she has to save because she has dates that she wants to hit these goals by. So these are her savings goals. Let's look at this information in the budget by paycheck method. So first we have our budget calendar. Now she is paid monthly, which makes the budgeting by paycheck method a little bit easier. She's paying everything with the one paycheck. Everything in green is what she's paying with this paycheck. Now we have decided that her paycheck covers all of her bills and variable spending. And so we're gonna use the money that she gets for her tutoring every week for that moving savings goal. We're not even gonna budget it out. We are just saying the moment we get that money, we're doing an automatic transfer to that moving savings goal. Now, if we look at the budget by paycheck tracker, we have that paycheck we're getting on the first and then all of our fixed expenses that you can see here in green. We're then going to cover all of her variable spending. So that's that beauty, eating out, lunches for work, shopping, and gas. That leaves us um, 1,043 euros. Then what I decided to do with the excess or the extra money in her budget is I'm gonna go ahead and cover these sinking funds. And then I'm going to make a drastic move. Even after paying our sinking funds, we're left with 679 euros that she can work with. I'm saying pay off the entire credit card. There's no reason to have that debt and just doing the 25 euros a month for the minimum payment while you're getting charged 12%. If this real life budget is all about preparing yourself to move out on your own, eliminating this high interest debt is crucial for giving us the best chance to be successful while we are kind of working through the new expenses of being out on our own and living on our own and moving out. So I'm going to eliminate this and pay off the whole 345 euro balance. Even after paying off the credit card though, we're left with 334 euros. I'm saying let's put that toward our number one goal of moving and making sure she really has enough money for the first and last month deposit if she is renting an apartment. But when I was reading through my conversation with GoFran, I knew that this was not the problem, right? Getting the income, the organization, the spending plan of the budget by paycheck tracker. Her main question was, how do I prepare myself for my budget and new expenses when I move out? So there's a couple of things that you have to do. One starts with research. Is she going to get an apartment? Where exactly does she want that apartment to be located? Does she want it closer to work so she doesn't have to drive that far? The place that she is looking at, does she want amenities with that? Meaning, does she want a gym that comes with that apartment? Is the water, sewer, garbage included? We have to start researching. So what I do is I create a mock budget. What exactly does GoFran have to work with as far as how many euros she has coming in every month versus what she can work with after all of her necessities are paid for? So I created a mock budget. 
We know she gets paid 1707. She gets 180 euros every month for 1887 every month. Now, the gym membership is questionable because if she gets an apartment that has a gym facility on site, she won't have that. But let's plan that she's still gonna have to keep that gym membership. We have Netflix, we have phone, and then we have our automatic investment contribution, which gives us 219 euros for her fixed necessity bills. That leaves us 1668. You can, then you throw up your hands and you say, what do I want to do with that 1668? Well, you're going to have necessity variable expenses like food and gas. That's gonna eat up some of that 1668. Then you're gonna have new fixed expenses living out on your own. Okay, this is where the research comes into play. You're gonna have first and last deposit. You're gonna have future rent bill every single month. You're gonna have utilities if they're not included. Internet, renter's insurance. You need to list out all of those new things, new fixed expenses based on your research. So for example, if you're looking in a place where you know you wanna live, maybe she wants to be within say 20 blocks of her work or within a certain distance from her work and she's looking at all the different apartments in that area, what are they going for? What's the rent every month? And then for the utilities, you know what you can do with a lot of apartments, you can actually call up the utility company and ask for the average of that apartment and they can give you an average cost. So you kind of know what you have to budget for. And then the question becomes, how much of your rent or mortgage or housing do you want to take up the rest of this income of the 1668? What I mean by that is, if she finds an apartment she really loves, but it's $1,500 a month, and we look and see to ourselves, okay, she only has 1668. Is that realistic? Probably not. Because then it becomes an income problem. If we found something for 1500, that doesn't give us very much many euros left over for the rest of the necessities in our life, like food, gas, and any other fixed costs that comes with moving out on your own. This is all scenarios. And you need to play these scenarios out in a mock budget, writing down exactly right now that you're paying for that you will need when you move out, any new variable, any new fixed expenses, and the research that you have done as far as the cost of living outside of the home that you're in with, with her mom. Main question is where she wants to live, what are the apartments going for in that area? I think that would be my first number. I'd start looking around. So this is the mock budget. This is actually how I would work through if I were moving out. You have to look at what you have coming in versus what you can realistically afford. And that, that can be a big eye opener, what you can afford. Because remember, what you can afford is not just your rent expense. It's all the other costs that goes into it. Your other necessity variable spending, your other fixed expenses for housing or household expenses. So that's GoFran's information in the budget by paycheck method. Now living at home, and as you could see with the budget by paycheck tracker, she's able to pay off her credit card. That's the first thing we wanna do. We want to eliminate that debt because we know she has new expenses that are gonna be popping up with moving out. A lot of renting expenses, first and last deposit, possibly new fixed expenses, changing her variable expenses, depending on where her new place is. Is she gonna to have to add more gas to her variable spending? These are all factors. And so as far as paying off that credit card, using that tutoring income that she receives every week for $45, okay, we're just, like I showed in the video, we're just throwing that toward our moving savings goal. Now, I did show with this first paycheck in May, we're going to eliminate that credit card. There's no use in having that credit card if we don't need to have that debt, debt there, and we definitely don't need the debt. As far as her new expenses when it comes to, how do you even prepare 
for moving out on your own when you're not even sure what the costs are going to be. Sure, it's a lot of up in the air, it's a lot of unknown, but we can prepare ourselves by researching and putting down in a mock budget what we do know. We do know that she has $1,668 to use. That's after all of her needs, her fixed expenses are paid for. The gym, which is a question mark, because if she gets an apartment that has a gym facility on site, then she will no longer need her gym membership. But that's her Netflix, that's her phone, that's keeping that investment contribution going. So we have the 1668, that's to use for variable expenses. It's my suggestion that after she figures out how much of that she wants to use for her renting expense, to always make sure, or t it's hard to give, me a, to give you a specific dollar amount, but if it were me, I would keep that rent expense around $800, $900 a month. That would give her about $800 left for any variable expenses that she needs to change or any new fixed ex expenses that are gonna come into her life. It is hard to budget for the unknown, but we can prepare by doing research and doing trial and error, mock budgets. Okay, if I did this, this is how much money I'd have left over for this. If I decrease this rent expense, then I could have this. It's all about playing around and then looking at the numbers, looking at your mock budget and saying, are you comfortable with this? So that is GoFran's information inside of the Budget by Paycheck Method. If you found this video helpful, please like it and don't forget to subscribe. All right. I think I know what I'm talk about. Okay. She does get $45. <laughs> All right.